So in this video, we're actually going to go ahead and set up the booking page. So this is going to be the page where a customer can go to and then actually book an appointment or um, schedule a service, whatever that might be. So we are logged into Microsoft Bookings and I'm on the home page. So what I'm going to do is navigate to the booking page. So we don't have anything set up yet. So we can see that the booking page status is not published. All right. So. What we're going to do is look through the different settings and go ahead and actually get this set up. The first thing that we can see is booking page access control. So do we require the person that's trying to book to have a Microsoft 365 or Office 365 account from this same organization to be able to book? Um, I'm going to use this for customers, so no, I definitely don't want that. If this is selected, then when somebody goes to the link for your booking page, they will be prompted to log into um, Office 365 with an account. And if it's not part of the same organization, they're going to get a forbidden error. They're not going to be able to do it. So we don't want to do that. Then disable direct search engine indexing of the booking page. So if you have a website of your own, then you should be familiar with search engine indexing. That's basically publishing content and then Google or Bing or whatever search engine it is actually then finding that content and then moving it up the search engine ranking. So when somebody Googles and search in, sorry, puts in some kind of search term, are you going to be shown in the search engine? So do you want that to happen or not? Um, if I don't, then I'm going to go ahead and disable it because no, I don't want search engines indexing my booking page. All right. So then what we've got is we have the customer data usage content consent. So when somebody is going to go ahead and book, maybe we want them to basically have some kind of message that says, well, when you submit information on this booking page, your contact details are going to be sent to this organization. So whatever that might be. So if you've got a specific message that you want to display, we can put that in there. So let's go ahead and we'll put in what our um, uh, usage con consent statement is going to be. So when somebody goes ahead and books, they will be um, acknowledging this information. So whatever that is for your organization. All right. So then the scheduling policy, so the settings for when customers can book services. So we're going to show available times in increments of whatever time slot that might be. So I might put it as um, an hour, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. We'll just leave it at 30 minutes. Then we've got a minimum lead time. So the minimum lead time would be, are we going to allow someone to book an appointment really, really soon? So if I left that at 24 hours, I could basically um, finish on a Sunday and then, oh, sorry, I could have nothing on a Sunday and then look on Monday morning. And then all of a sudden I've got some appointments that have been booked. So maybe I want to say, well, actually you need 48 hours notice before you can go ahead and book something. So, if, so we've got that at 48 hours, then the maximum lead time. So how many number day of days in advance can a booking be made? So 365 means I could book something for close to next year. Um, I only want people to be able to book up to 30 days in advance because we don't know what's going to happen and people might have holidays that are coming up. Um, so we want to have a 30 day window to where you can book up to 30 days. And then after that, you have to wait so we can set that lead time. Then what we've got is some email notifications. So for our email notifications, um, we can notify the business via email when a booking is created or changed. So by default, that is going to be turned on and that will send an email um, that will go through to um, let the booking calendar email address know. And then also, if we've got that setting on a staff member, we can also let the staff member know that they've got something that's booked for them. So that's two different notifications potentially. So one that goes to the email address tied to the booking calendar and one that could go to the staff member that's been booked, depending on the settings on their specific record. So what we've also got is send a meeting invite to the customer in addition to the confirmation email. Now I'm going to set that. So in the next video that we look at where we're actually looking at the experience that the staff member and the customer has, we'll see what happens. So 
keep that in mind. We're going to turn that on so we can see. So with that, we'll get the um, we'll get the actual email that says, hey, this has been booked. And then we'll also get um, a, an invite as well. Staff, allow customers to choose a specific person for the booking. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and we'll leave that selected so we can see how that works. And then availability. So what it says is, in general, a service can be booked when it's staff or free. If you wish to customize this further, you can do so below. So if I've set everything up correctly on my staff members and we know that their availability is accurate, then I should be able to book someone when the staff are free. However, what we then got is the ability to set custom hours or say that actually they're not bookable. So we can set that. Um, and we could say custom hours and then we have the ability to change that that's based on what it, we've already got set up. We can actually change it for the specific booking page. So I'm going to say, no, it's bookable when staff are free. Then what we could also do is we could set different availability for a specific date range. So maybe um, there's something going on and we're only going to be doing half days um, for a specific um, week. So I could go ahead and change that and I could say, all right, well, next week um, from the Monday through to the Wednesday, and I'm going to set the hours specifically for that. So I'm going to say for that time frame, it's nine o'clock and I'm going to say it's going through till 12 o'clock. Um, because maybe we've got some staff training going on specifically within this this time frame. So I can set that and then I can remove everything else so that when it comes to those dates, that's all that's going to be available to us. Oh, sorry, to the customer. And last one, let's go ahead and change that so that it is all the same. OK, so then if we go back up here, we can set our color theme. So I can go ahead and I can pick from something that is a preset or I could set the custom color scheme for the booking page. So for this, I can set the highlight color and the header color. So my highlight color, I might go ahead and put that in. And then for my header color, I could use a color that maybe I've got for my logo so I can change it slightly so that it's then a little bit more ties a little bit more in with my specific color scheme. Then we can say we want to display the business logo on the booking page or not and turn that on and off. And then also we can say, do we want to show time slots in business time zone? Yes or no. Um, or are we basically allowing it to show in the time zone of the person that's viewing it? All right, so once we're done with all of those different settings, we can go ahead and then save and publish that specific page. So now we can see that the status is published and we have a few options here to share the page and we're gonna go ahead and open the published page. So now what I can see is the, the logo, we can see the, the name of the company um, and then we can see the services that are available. So if I go ahead and I click on that, um, I've only got Tom Simpson that is available for that specific service. And then I can go ahead and I can look through the calendar and I can see when is Tom available, pick a date and then pick a time. So we can see that it's already up and running. That's all that we needed to do. That's pretty cool. We've now got our booking page ready to go, ready to start sharing with people and get customers to start booking. So hopefully that's helpful. You can go ahead and set up your own booking page. And then in future um, videos, we're going to be looking at all kinds of things that we can do, um, sharing on social media, tying to our Facebook page, um, and then doing stuff with the Power Platform, Power Automate, Power BI, and Power App. So certainly hope, you're, hope you are following this series on Microsoft Bookings, and I hope that it's helpful. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.